Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. Today, we find ourselves in upstate New York, and the young man that is joining us is one of the best of the best of the last five years. He wrestled for Cornell. He's Gabe Dean. Gabe, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. The news is out, Gabe, that you're going to be transitioning to Greco. Let's talk about your history in Greco. How much of it do you have in your uh, in your past? About three weeks. <laughs> three, three weeks. All of that. What's that? What's yep. what's the challenge? The greatest challenge for you? You know, if I pair up a, a a guy like Dan Severn and a guy like Butterbean in a boxing match, Severn automatically will drop down to. Uh, pick up, you know, Eric's es- Eric Esch's uh, legs and shoot in. Um, you know, there's always going to be that challenge because what you've done is spent the majority of your life learning how to be a freestyle or folk style wrestler. So talk to us about the challenges you're facing right now. Um, I think just it's just a big learning curve for me. I um, like and I never wrestled any freestyle Greco in high school. I wrestled just a tiny bit in college. Um, so, and, and it's just a really small amount of Greco. So it's just a lot of learning, you know, um, adjusting. And, um, but, uh, luckily for me, I've, I've got great support, uh, good training partners, uh, great coaches, um, that are willing to spend the time and, uh, patience with me to, uh, to, uh, get better at this, this style of wrestling. So, um, yeah, just a lot, a lot of learning in front of me. Talk to us about the 2015 Pan Am Championship. Silver medal performance there with just a couple weeks of prep. How did that all happen? Um, you know, we uh, just trying to focus on, you know, not not trying to do too much. Uh, focus on just hand fighting and, um, you know, when you get on top, you know, working on some gut wrench stuff. So I... Uh, kept it real simple um and just try to get good at a couple things um because obviously i didn't have the time to really evolve um as, into a like a true greco wrestler um but i was always a pretty good hand fighter so we just kind of built off of that and um you know i ended up doing pretty well uh, i was definitely outclassed in the finals um the cuban was a better uh greco wrestler than me um definitely more experienced so uh, just, uh, but had a lot of fun and, uh, Greco guys and coach Lindland and the coaches on that trip, um, helped me a lot. Um, and also the weeks prior, um, I, I had a lot of help at Cornell. So, um, yeah, just, just, uh, a lot of fun. You mentioned that, uh, your opponent, the Cuban was, was a little better than you. Well, let me tell you something. The Cubans are really good at Greco across weights. It's just really good. Yeah. So with with your arrival into Greco as a full full on passion, this is what you're going to do. You've made that commitment. Um, the U.S. Greco team just got that much better, and that seems to be the pervasive attitude across the country that Greco is becoming more of a focal point. Are you feeling that? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I um, I think you know the Greco guys are really good, really good guys, and I think they really put a lot of passion and and hard into the sport. Um, and, uh, I think, I think the country's starting to kind of feed off that a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, my, when I was on my trip with them and I've been around them a little bit on a couple other trips, um, they're just really, you know, down to earth, nice guys. And, um, you know, just to be able to train and have the opportunity, have the opportunity to train, um, with them is, um, is very humbling for me. And I'm just very, very grateful to be a part of it going to work off some questions that were uh, made by five point move and the good folks there um, because they just love greco wrestling as we do Um, did your did your experience at the 2015 pan americans play a role in your decision to to accept uh, matt lindland's invitation oh i think it i think it uh kind of uh jump-started the idea that you know i had potential maybe to possibly be good at greco um, and definitely, you know, my dad has had a pretty good history of Greco. He was, he did pretty well on the senior circuit, never made a team, but was right there too. Um, so there's kind of my blood a little bit there. And, uh, I think it just kind of, uh, made another door, a possibility, um, for me. Um, you know, I just, a lot, I'm just, pre- I'm pretty raw in the, and I was, I was raw when I was coming into college wrestling, uh, too. So. 
um, just trying to see, you know, trying to tap into my highest potential and see how good I can get and um, kind of let the rest take care of itself. So I'd say that trip opened, opened a door. Uh, We're talking with Gabe Dean, collegiate star for sure. Really expected to see on the world, uh, on the world stage in Paris, honestly did. Uh, there was zero question in my mind you were going to make that. Uh, but you did. So we move on. We move into Greco. Um, I've said this all along. You've got a great Greco frame. Um, has Matt Linland talked to you about that? Because what you got balance, you got hips, uh, your strength is huge. Uh, and that's what's going to take. Got wrench, got wrench, got wrench. Uh, every, everything you do, positioning, of course, heavy snaps, quick snaps. These are all things that are going to translate well into Greco. What have you heard? What has Matt Linland been talking to you about? Um, you know, we've, we, we've had a couple of short conversations here. Um, you know, we'll be a lot more, uh, discussing and moving forward over this next couple months, uh, to train, um, here pretty soon too, for, for a good chunk of days. So, um, you know, with me, it's, um, I, I'm kind of excited cause I, uh, I've always just kind of jump, you know, just see opportunity and jump at it and, um, and uh, you know, I don't know if I'll if I'll be good or not, but I um, I just I know I'll put everything I got into it, and um, I'm just I'm excited to work with the people that are a part of it. So I think it may be too soon to crown you the next Matt Linlin or the next Steve Fraser, but I think you've got the basic tools that it takes. Now you need to, you know, sharpen up the uh, tools, as it were, and sharpen up your skills. Uh, Matt Linlin is doing an obviously doing a great job with uh, U.S. Greco and uh, developing programs around the country uh what what about what is it about greco that excites you the most is it the fact that you now have to almost reinvent yourself oh uh, yeah i think that's that's kind of what i was just touching on is that um you know uh my my whole path in sports has just been you know being able to recognize opportunity and and just jump on it and you know work as hard as i can and just see where things go so um, just Greco is kind of almost like a new sport to me, which is exciting. And, um, I'm just, uh, doing the same thing. I feel like I'm kind of just coming into college, you know, my first year in college wrestling again, or, you know, just stepping on the field for the first time when I was, you know, younger and stuff like that. So I just, I like that feeling. I like, it's exciting. And to not have a lot of knowledge in an area and be having, um, the support around you to be able to build. Um, I'm just excited for that and um, just eager to see uh, where it takes me. When when uh, are they and when are you expecting to uh, uh, re-debut, as it were? Uh, as in competing? Yes, competition um, for in Greco. Uh, I'm not totally sure yet. Um, I get back, you know, we'll be back to a full training cycle Um you know, summer I'm running trips and stuff, so I'm kind of jumping around between um, June and July. But um, in August, you know, it starts getting too routine again, and um, I'm sure they will have plenty of competition for me just based upon the fact that I need it. So um, I, uh, it's probably probably sooner rather than later for sure. During the summer, you spent a lot of time with kids. I've I've seen you. As a matter of fact, one of the favorite pictures I have of you is at New York's Madison Square Garden. You're on a mat. You're uh, uh, on a hip and a knee up, and in front of you is a young man named Isaiah Bird. Do you remember the picture I'm talking about? I do, Okay, yes. it's, it's absolutely one of my favorite pictures because if I were to describe you, I could simply hold up that picture. You've always had time for kids, and I think it's the sport, but perhaps the way you're raised, but the way you exhibit uh, is even better because you keep giving back. Do you, do you like summers because of that reason? Um, for me, wrestling is much more than just, just a sport and just something that I've, that I've had the opportunity to do well at, um, in college. Um, it's something that I've tried to use, um, in my story to, uh, success in college is just a little bit more unique and relatable probably for a lot of kids growing up and maybe having a tough time, you know, with, you know, the winning and losing of the sport. And, um, I just try to keep relaying that, you know, when the sport gets tough, you know, just, you know, stick through it because the adversity just in it is much more important 
um, for that those next stages in your life where you know you take on big challenges um, and you know when you're you you know you become a husband and a father and um, you know being able to you know be the best possible versions of those um, wrestling helps that and um, I just try to keep everything in a perspective and um, really connect with kids because not only are they the future of our sport but you know, if I'm able to connect with a couple of kids that maybe are having a tough time with wrestling and, you know, get them, help them remotivate themselves and be excited about it again, then, you know, I know that they're going to, it's not, not only they'll maybe accomplish the things they want to in the sport, but they'll be really thankful someday when, you know, challenges come along and they're able to, uh, you know, they're, they stuck with it and able to draw from it. So, um, you know, kids are really important to me and, um, I love spending time with them and, helping in any way I can. So I do, I do take on a lot of camps. Thank you for that, by the way. Um, I will ask you this, where will your training take place? Will it take place, uh, in, in, uh, or at Cornell? Um, it will take place, um, at Cornell, uh, the majority of it. And obviously I'll be, um, making trips out to Colorado Springs, um, for camps and stuff like that. But majority it will be at Cornell. So uh, some, your, your brother is scheduled to start there soon, isn't he? Yeah, he, uh, he, he took his gap year this past year, so he'll be a freshman at Cornell this upcoming year. That would be kind of cool being around that. Oh, yeah. I mean, when he was out here this past year, it was just incredible. Um, he's my best friend, and he's my brother, which is just so cool. At the same time, we're so tight. Uh, we'll be living together, which I'm really excited about, and um He's just a great kid. He works super hard. Yeah, he's a humble kid. Um, and I just, uh, I, you know, he's got to earn his way. He's definitely got some challenges in front of him. But um, I'm just excited to see his growth in the sport as well. Gabe, we've been excited to watch you all these years. And I can't wait to see what you do on the Greco front. I've always seen you search for something, and it's called perfection. Perfection in your moves, and you give it all. You, there's nothing left to chance. Can you imagine if you had not had the uh, the support around you, the encouragement it took for you to make this decision, but for you to have not made this decision, you would always be left wondering what if, right? Yeah, and, and yeah, that's a big part of you know my life is I just never want to wonder what if. So, um, like I said, just jumping out at these opportunities and giving everything you got. So, whether whatever happens, you know, win or lose, or you know success or no success you can walk away knowing that you know you tried so um and you live with no regrets and that's 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 major that's a big thing for me so we'll see what happens what, and, what, uh, what weight are they pinning on you at this point what 85, 85 85 kilos kilogram. okay yeah you know there were several so, guys like joe Rao and others that uh ended up going down to lincoln nebraska to challenge and uh, see if they yeah. could uh, make a difference. And you know what? It was fun to watch. It was fun to watch. But yeah. now we're seeing it go the other way. Gabe Dean makes his move to Greco. And I got to tell you, the future looks bright for the Greco program now that we're seeing a guy as stellar uh, as Gabe Dean is and will be. Gabe, thanks for the time today. Anybody you want to thank on the way out? Uh, just thanks for all the support. I uh, really appreciate it. And, um, you know, we'll just uh, see where this uh, road goes. And um, thank you, Scott, of course, for having me on. It's always a pleasure uh, talking to you, um, one of the true professionals in our sport. So thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks, buddy. For all of us at Takedown, our very special guest in the Nike hot seat today, one of my faves, a great guy, tremendous athlete, but more than anything, just a really good person. And we need a whole lot more of them in our sport. I'm Scott Casper for Takedown. Thanks for watching.